Hello, folks, and welcome to the first installment of our Creo Parametric NC training course. This is mainly in response to Chris's comment about how to set up this stuff, and Chris's comment is more directed towards how do I get Creo to manufacture something, but I'm going to sort of take a step backwards in case we have any new users who are watching this, how to set up Creo to work efficiently. And this will also help when I'm flying through things later, trying to get stuff set up for manufacturing, so you have a bit of a background about what I'm talking about. So before you even open up Creo, come over to your Creo parametric icon, right click it and go to properties. You can see right here, there's a box already highlighted called target. This is the program Creo. So if you were to copy paste this into your folder browser, it would take you to Creo's little folder where the actual program that runs Creo is. We don't want to change that. What you do want to look at is the start in. This is your startup directory. So whenever Creo opens up, it's going to go to this start in directory and look for stuff. We'll explain what this stuff is later, but you want to have this set to somewhere that you know where it is. By default, it is something like users public public documents. So for those of you who aren't familiar with a folder browser, you open up a folder browser, you go to this PC, go to your local disk C, and down here there's this folder called users. And so there, in my computer, there's me, the administrator, which is when the school owned this laptop, they had that file, and then there's public, which means that anyone who has a valid account that logs onto this computer can access those documents. My username, only I can access those documents, but Creo by default puts stuff in the public documents folder. That's its default startup directory. And if I open that, go to public documents, you can see I have a trail file, which is a Creo file that we'll talk about later on. And so this is an okay place to dump stuff, but not the best because I oftentimes forget that the public folder is even there. I'm much more comfortable putting stuff under my name in my documents folder, which you're probably familiar from Office. That's pretty much the default place to save everything. And I just have a little subfolder called Creo stuff that this is where my Creo startup directory is. And you can see that right here, Johnson LA 17 documents Creo stuff. So once you have this set to an address that you're comfortable with, click OK, and now you can open up Creo. And Creo will do its thing. And while Creo is thinking, I would like to say that those of you who have commented on my microphone situation, I'm working on it. Hopefully by the end of this week, I will have a microphone sitting on my desk that I can experiment with and hopefully not break it. But this should help with some of the coming in and out and the fuzziness that accompanies the sound on my videos. Hopefully that fixes it, but I wanted to get this video out quickly so that I can get these done before my school revokes my Creo license, probably towards the beginning of August sometimes. So we're waiting on Creo. Maybe he needs a little bit more encouragement. A few moments later. Alrighty, now that Creo is up and running after a good deal of thinking, let's start working on this configuration file. So we'll go to File, drop down to Options, and in this window, there is Configuration Editor at the very bottom. You can see I have many settings here. Not all of them are necessary to what we're going to be working on. I'm going to introduce you to a few of them. The first one I'd like you to see is this trail directory at the very bottom of my list. You can find these settings by going to the Find box, and type in what you're looking for, trail, and it'll come up with a bunch of different options, and we want trail directory. What this tells Creo is where to put all of its tra trail files, pardon me, which are Creo's little breadcrumbs 
that tell it where you've been. So as you construct the model, every feature you make, when you regenerate, things like that are stored in a trail file that you could play back later if you wished. Odds are most of us are not interested in that. So whereas Creo by default puts stuff in public documents like we mentioned earlier, I have this folder here called trail files. That way it dumps all my trail files in there and I can delete them whenever I don't need them, which is I never need them. So you can put in a convenient directory for you in there, click add change, and close, and click OK. Now ordinarily, if I were to say change an option to something that's not what it is, and click OK, it's going to ask me, do you want to save these settings to a configuration file? If you really want to change something, click yes. What that does is saves your settings that you've changed to your configuration file, and that gets saved to your startup directory that we talked about at the beginning of the video. That way when Creo starts up, it pulls up a configuration file, and you can see mine under my Creo stuff directory. I have this config file. And then if you can open this in any text editor and it'll have all your options here. Now you can see what all options I have. Most of them aren't going to be applicable to you because they're stuck from my computer with all of my file directory and certain data structures. But every time Creo opens up, it's going to go to this startup directory, look for this configuration file, open it, and read off all the options I have set. This one, NC post type, and the other one, G post processor directory, tells Creo what kind of post processor you're using to translate files from Creo's machining language to the machining language G code dialect that your machine speaks. We will get into more about how to use those later in the next installment. You can also set your manufacturing parameters and work cells. We'll talk about that in the next installments. And also all of your part templates. This is especially important if you have a company template for parts and for drawings, which are actually your pro format directories where you set your drawing formats. But these templates will help you set up things that your company has a specific part template they want you to use that has certain parameters, certain materials set in it, you can set those here. And you just go over here and you can browse to a convenient location. The last setting that I think we should discuss now before plunging into manufacturing is Sketcher starts in 2D. You want to set this to yes. As an example, let's make a new part, okay? And say I want to make a sketch on this plane, so I'll select the plane, hit sketch, and presto, it rotates my sketch so that I'm facing it head on, and I can look at the geometry flat. If you have that sketcher starts in 2D set to no, sketcher will leave your planes at whatever wonky angle you left them, and it's kind of hard to sketch on this because when you start drawing a circle, it kind of looks like an oval and it looks weird. All right, and we'll just quit out of Sketcher and close that new part file that I don't actually want. So I hope that gives you some of the introduction that you're needing, especially if you're a new user to Creo, the configuration file structure of how to set your options and setting default directories is so different from any other software I've used. I hope that gets you a little bit acclimated to what you're looking at. My plan is for this video series in the next part to answer more of Chris's, Chris's question directly, which is how to get Creo set up to do manufacturing. So we'll be looking at things about how to set up work cells, how to set up where your post processors go, all of your part templates, and the Creo and C process. And then in a third installment, hopefully, hopefully that second one can remain in one and not be split up. But in the third installment, hopefully, we will cover 
host processors and how to use the third party software from Austin and C that Creo uses to host process G code. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and hope to see you in the next video. Bye for now.